live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering RSA Conference 2019. Brought to you by Forescout. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in the Forescout booth at RSA in Moscone Center. 40,000 people walking around talking about security. It's by far the biggest security event in the world. We're excited to be here. And uh, welcome back a CUBE alumni who's been playing in the security space for a very long time. He's Brad Maderi, the EVP from Booz Allen Hamilton. Brad, great to see you. Hey, thanks for having me here today. Absolutely. Yeah, it, I've, uh, I've already walked about seven miles today and <laughs> uh, just glad to be here to have a conversation. Yeah, the Fitbit and the, the, the walking trackers love this place, right? You it, feel your circles in a very short period of time. I, I feel very fit, fit after today, so thank you. But it's pretty interesting, right? So you're in a, you're in a position where you're advising companies, both government and, 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 and commercial companies, you know, to come into an environment like this and just be overwhelmed by so many options, right? And and you can't buy everything here, and you shouldn't buy everything here. So how do you help? How do you help your clients kind of navigate this crazy landscape? Yeah, it's it's interesting. So you mentioned forty thousand people. Um, you know, as you can see on the show, show uh, showroom floor behind us, thousands of product companies, and frankly, our clients are confused. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of tools, a lot of technologies. There's no silver bullet, and you know, our, our clients are asking a couple fundamental problem, or a couple fundamental questions. One, how effective am I? And then, once I'm effective, you know, uh, how can I be more efficient with my cybersecurity spend? So it's funny, effective. So how are they measuring effective, right? Because that's a that's a kind of a changing, amorphous thing to target as well. That's a, I mean, that's 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 the that's the key question in cybersecurity: is how how effective am I? Um, you know, there's lots of tools and technologies. We do a lot of you know, instant response, both commercially and federally. And in general, uh, when looking at uh, past breaches, it's not a tool problem. In most cases, everyone has the best of the best in tools and technologies, but either they're drowning in data um, and or the, the tools aren't configured uh, properly. So, you know, we're, we're spending a lot of time helping our clients baseline their current environment, help them look at their tool configurations, help them look at their security operations center, helping them figure out, can they detect the most recent threats and how, how quickly can they respond? Right, and then how do they prioritize? That's the thing that always amazes me, because again, you can't do everything. Right. And 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 it's fascinating with the, you know, the recent elections and you know, kind of the state funded uh, threats is that what the bad guys are going on, going after, excuse me, isn't necessarily your personal identifying information or your bank account, but all kinds of things that you may not have thought were that valuable yesterday. Right, I mean, you know, it's funny, we, we talk a lot about these black swan events. And so you look at NotPetya and, you know, with NotPetya, um, there were some companies that were really hit in, in a very significant way. And, you know, everyone, everyone is surprised, right? And, and it, 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 we see it time after time folks caught, caught off guard by you know, these unanticipated attack vectors. It, it's, it's a big problem, um, but you know, I think you know, our clients are, are getting better. They're starting to be more proactive. They're, start, they're starting to become more integrated communities where they're taking intelligence and using that to better tune and tailor their security operation programs. And they, you know, they're starting to also use, take the tools and technologies in their environment, better tie them and integrate them with their operational processes and getting better. Right. So another big change in the landscape, uh, you said you've been coming here for years, is IoT, right? And, yeah. And uh, Cisco called industrial IoT, or GE call it, yeah. Internet of Things. Um, a lot more devices should or should not be connected. Well, they're all going to be connected. They right. weren't necessarily designed to be connected. And you also work on the military side as well, right? right? I mean, these have significant implications. These things do things, whether it's a turbine, whether it's something in a hospital that's monitoring yeah. your heart, or whether it's you know something in a military scenario. So, how are you seeing the adoption of that? Obviously, the benefits far outweigh you know the potential downfalls, but you got to protect for the downfalls. Yeah, you know, the OT. We view OT as one of the most pressing cybersecurity challenges uh, that our clients face today. And it's funny, when we first started engaging in the OT space, um, there was a big vocabulary mismatch. You had the CISO organizations that were talking threat actors and attack vectors, and then you had head of manufacturing that were talking uptime, availability, and reliability, and they were talking past each other. I think now we're, we're at, a, at a turning point where you know, both communities are coming together to recognize that this is a real and imminent threat you know, to the survival of their organization, and that they've got to protect uh, their OT environment. They're starting by making sure that they have segmentation in place, but, but that's not enough. 
And you know, it's interesting when we look into a lot of the OT environments, you know, we, I call it the Smithsonian of IT. And so, you know, I was looking at uh, one of our client environments and you know, they had uh, a lot of Windows NT devices. I'm like, that's great, I'm, I'm a Windows NT expert. I, I was using that between 1994 and 1996 and you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm- That's I, everybody's I, favorite vulnerability, yeah, yeah, right? I, I'm, I'm not your, even I'm, a I'm, hacker. I'm your guy. And so, <laughs> you know, one of the challenges that, that we're facing is, how do you go into these legacy environments that have very mission critical uh, operations and, you know, integrate cybersecurity, you know, to, to protect and ensure their mission. And so we're working with companies like Forescout, you know, that provide agentless, agentless capabilities that, that allow us to better, you know, one, understand what's in the environment and then be able to apply policies to be, be able to better protect and defend them. But certainly it's a major issue that, that everyone's facing. We spend a lot of time talking about issues in manufacturing, but, but think about the utilities, think about the power grid, think about building control systems, HVAC. Right. You know, I was talking to a client that has a very critical mission and I asked them, I'm like, what, what's your biggest challenge that, that you face today? And I was thinking for some, I was thinking they were going to be talking about their mission control system or, you know, some some of the real, you know, critical critical assets they have. But but he said, my biggest challenge is my my HVAC. And I'm like, really? He's like, if my HVAC goes down, my operation's going to be disrupted. I'm, I'm going to have to coop halfway across the country, and that could result in lo loss of life. It's a big issue. Yeah, it's wild. It's triggered all kinds of. I think Mike earlier today said that a lot, of the, a lot of the devices, you don't even know you're running NT. It's, right. it's like a little tiny version of NT that's running underneath this operating system that's right. running this device, so you don't even you know it. And it's funny, you talk about the, the, the HVAC, there was a keynote earlier today where they talked about, you know, if a data center HVAC goes down for, I think she said 60 seconds, yep. stuff starts turning off. That's right. So, you know, depending on what that thing is powering, that's a pretty significant uh, data point. Yeah, you know, I think where we are in the journey in the OT is, you know, we started by creating the burning platform, making sure that there was awareness around, hey, there is a problem, there is a threat. I think we've moved beyond that. We, we then moved into, you know, segmenting the, the IT and the OT environment. A lot of the major nation state attacks that we've seen started in the enterprise and moved laterally into the OT environment. So we're starting to get better segmentation in place. Now we're getting to a point where we're moving into you know, the shop floors, the, the manufacturing facilities, um, the utilities, and we're starting to understand what's on the network, right? In the IT world, this is a problem we've been struggling with for years and have started to overcome, but in the OT environment, it's still a problem. So we're understanding what's connected to the network and then building strategies for how we can really protect and defend it. And the difference is, it's not just about protecting and defending, but it's ensuring continuity of mission. It's about being resilient. Right, and being able to find if there's a problem, shut down the problem, because, I mean, we're almost numb to the, to the data breaches, right? They're in the paper right. every day. I mean, I think FICO was probably the last big one everyone had a conniption fit, and I was like, oh, okay, it's another, another data breach. So it's a, big, it's a big issue. That's right. So one of the things you talked about last time we had John was continuous diagnostic and, and, and mitigation. Yep. I think it's a really interesting take that's pretty clear in the wording that it's not it's not a, a buy something, put it in, and, and, and go on vacation. Yeah. This is a constant and ongoing process that yeah. you have to really be committed to. Yeah, you know, I, I think that you know our clients, um, both federally and commercially, are moving beyond compliance. And if you rewind the clock many years ago, everyone was looking at these compliance scores and saying, good to go. And in and, and, and reality, if you're, if you're compliant, you're really looking in the rear view mirror. And it's really about you know, putting in programs that's continually assessing risk, continuing to take a, a continuous look at your, your environment um, so that you can better understand what are the risks, what are the threats, and that you can prioritize activity and action. And I think the federal government is leading the way with some major programs, like out of DHS, Continuous Diagnostic and Mitigation, where they're really looking to uparmor.gov and uh, you know, really take a more proactive approach to you know, securing critical infrastructure. Right. I'm just curious, because you, you kind of split the fence uh, between the federal clients and the commercial clients. Yeah. Everybody's you know, kind of points of view impacts the way they see the world. Yeah. I mean, what if you could share kind of maybe what's more of a, a federal kind of centric view that yeah. wasn't necessarily shared on the commercial side that they prioritize, and then what's kind of the one on the commercial side that the feds are missing? I assume you want to get them both kind of thinking about the same thing, but there's got to be different set of priorities. Yeah, you know, I, I think after some of the major uh, commercial breaches, we saw the commercial entities go through a real focused effort to take the tools that they have uh, in the infrastructure to make sure that they're better integrated because 
you know, in this mass product landscape, there's lots of seams that the adversaries live in, and then better tie the tooling and the infrastructure with security operations. And on the security operations side, take more of an intelligence-driven approach, meaning that you're looking at what's going on out in the wild, taking that information, be able to enrich it, and using that to, to be more proactive. To, instead of waiting for an event to pop up on a screen, hunt for adversaries in your network. Right. Now we're seeing the commercial market really refining that approach, and now we're seeing our government clients start to adopt and embrace commercial best practices. Right. So I'm curious, I love that line, adversaries live in the seams. Yeah. Right, we're going to an all hybrid world, right? Public cloud is, is, is kicking tail. Yeah. Most people have stuff in public cloud, they have stuff in their own cloud, they have, you know, it's a very kind of hybrid ecosystem. That sounds like it's making a whole lot of seams. Yeah, you know, we're, you know just, when, just when we think we're get it, getting there, <laughs> you know, we're getting the enterprise under control, we've got asset management in place, you know, we're, we're um, modernizing security operations, we're being more hunt driven, more proactive. Now the atta attack service is expanding. You know, earlier we talked about the OT environment. That's introducing a much broader and new attack service. But now we're talking about cloud. And it's not just a single cloud, there's multiple cloud providers. Right. And now we're, not, now we're talking about software as a service and multiple software as a service providers. So, you know, it's not just what's in your environment now, it's your extended enterprise that includes cloud, software as a service, IT, um, or excuse me, OT, IOT and uh, the problem's getting much more complex. And so it's going to keep us busy for, for the next couple years. Yeah, I think job security is okay. I think we're, I think we're going to be busy. All so. right, hey Brad, before I let you go, just kind of top trends that you're thinking about, what you guys are looking at uh, as a company as we head into 2019. Yeah, you know, a couple things. You know, we're, um, Booz Allen being, being deeply rooted in defense and intelligence, we're working to unlocking our, our trade craft that we've gained through years of dealing with the adversary and working to figure out how to better apply that to cyber defense. Things like advanced threat hunting, things like adversary red teaming, things like being able to do baselining to assess the effectiveness of an organization. And then last but not least, AI. AI is a big trend uh, in the industry. It's probably become one of the most overused buzzwords, but we're looking at specific use cases around artificial intelligence. How do you, um, you know, better accelerate tier one, tier two um, event triaging in a SOC? How do you better detect um, you know, uh, adversary movement uh, to enhance detection in your enterprise. And, you know, AI is, uh, you know, a, a very, you know, a major, major term that's being thrown out at, the, uh, at this conference, but we're really looking at how to operationalize that over the next three to five years. Right, right, and the bad guys have it too. And, right. and never forget Amara's Law, one of my favorite, uh, not quoted enough laws, right? Yeah. We tend to overestimate in the short term and underestimate in the long term. That's so right. maybe today's buzzword, yep. but three to five years, AI is going to be everywhere. Absolutely. All right, well Brad, thanks for taking a few minutes hey. of your day and stopping Thank you. by. Good to yep. see you again. All right. All right, he's Brad, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. We're at RSA Conference in downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.